Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 10. Let's get started. Today, we will be learning how to use the distributive property with arrays to decompose units. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. We will use math in real life situations. We will know that we are successful when we can break apart an array into two expressions, multiply, and then add the products together to solve. What is distributive? When you break apart a larger expression into two smaller expressions and add the two products together, that is the distributive property. In this lesson, we will break apart an array. We call that decomposing. So in the illustration, we have one column with three in it, and we have two more columns with three in it. So that would be a total of three times three. Draw an array that shows three rows of six X's. One, two, three rows with one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. So I have three rows of six X's. That would be three rows of six or three times six. Three rows of six is three times six. Draw a line under the first row to decompose the array. Remember, to decompose means to break it apart. So we're going to draw a line under the first row to break it apart from the rest of the rows. It looks like this. Write multiplication expressions to represent each part of the array. So the first part has one row of six. That would be one group of six or one times six. The second part has two rows of six. That would be two rows of six or two times six. Now we're going to use those decomposed expressions to solve for the whole array. Remember the first array, when we started, it had three rows of six. So that would be three times six. And we broke it apart. We took this first row and made it a row all by itself. And we called that one times six. Then we took the remaining two rows and put it next to it. And now we have two rows of six or two times six. So if we added those two rows back together, if we put this a row and put it back on top here, that would be three rows of six. So as it stands, they're broken apart. So I need to find the product of one times six and two times six to get three times six. I know that one times six is six. One times any number is the number. That's the rule. 
2 times 6 is 12. I can count by 2 6 times, or I can count by 6s 2 times, according to the commutative property. So I think I'll count by 2 6 times. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So 1 row of 6 is 6. 2 rows of 6 is 12. So 3 rows of 6, I found out, should be 18, because 12 plus 6 equals 18. Notice in my stacked addition equation, I put the bigger number on top. So that sets up where my place value would be. I have the two in the ones place, so that means I put the six in the ones place also. I put it under the two. Two plus six is eight. Now I only have a one in the tens place, so one plus nothing is one. That's one ten. The answer to 12 plus six is 18, and I know that that should be 18. Let's go back. We're going to count every single x just to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that's correct. Now I'm going to count these ones and add it to those ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this row plus this row is also equal to 18. Let's try another one. Use the distributive property with the array to decompose. Looking at the array, I see I have one, two, three rows. I have one, two, three, four, five in each row. That's how I get the expression three rows of five or three times five. Now, I'm going to break this apart into separate rows. So I'm going to have something times 5 plus something times 5. All right, I chose to put a line under the first row. It's my choice. I could have put it under the second row. I just want to break this apart in some way. But I chose to break it apart into one row of 5 plus two rows of 5. Now I set it up just like this. 1 row of 5 plus 2 rows of 5 equals 3 rows of 5. In other words, 5 plus 10 equals 15. 10 plus 5 equals 15. Let's go back. We're going to count the diamonds, or the triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's true. 3 times 5 does equal 15. Notice that the second number does not change. That's the amount in each row. So it's going to be 5 in all three expressions. The only thing that changed was the first factor. That's the number of rows. So one row plus two row equals three rows. All right, let's put this to the test. We're going to do a read, draw, write question together, and then you'll do one on your own. So we're going to read the question and pick out the important information, draw out some sort of math model, and then we're going to write a complete sentence to answer. All right, Annabella has three boxes with seven pencils in each box. That's three groups of seven. Sean has two boxes with seven pencils in each box. That's two more groups of seven. How many pencils do they have all together? So this word, all together, is the important word. When I see all together, that means I have to add some numbers together. 
So I'm going to use an array because that's what we have been using today, but you can draw whatever you want to draw. Let's go to my Jamboard. You can go to the Jamboard along with me if you have access to Google. I've put the link to a Jamboard in the description box below, or you can just type Jamboard in your Google browser and you should get something that looks like this. So I'm pressing the plus key to get a new Jamboard. I want a clean surface to work on. I'm choosing the pen tool. Now I want to go back to the question and be very precise about what information I'm using. Annabella has three boxes with seven pencils. That's three groups of seven. All right, three groups of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's Annabella. I'm just going to write an A to represent Annabella. She has three rows of seven. Okay, let's look at the question again because we want to be very sure that we're using the correct numbers. It says that Sean has two boxes with seven pencils in each box. That's two groups of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is Sean's pencils. Sean has two groups of seven. All right, that's what we have so far. The question is, how many pencils do they have all together, that means I'm adding. So I need to add three sevens plus two sevens. And I know that five plus two, I'm sorry, three plus two equals five. Five sevens. Now I'm going to use the strategy that we just used and I'm going to complete what the objective was for today, and that means that I'm going to add two expressions together to find a larger factor. So three times seven, I'm going to count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Three times seven is 21. And I'm going to count by twos seven times. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 equals 14. Now I'm going to find my answer. 21 plus 14 Looking at the ones place, one plus four equals five. And then I always start in the ones place and go to the tens place next. Two tens plus one ten is three tens or 30. So my answer is 35. There are 35 pencils all together. All right, that was step two, which is to draw. Now I have to write my answer out in complete sentences. I always want to use words from the question. How many pencils do they have all together? So I'm going to type, they have 35 pencils. All together, I solved this by by adding three times seven plus two. Oh, 
I'm going to put parentheses. I want to keep these expressions separate. 3 times 7 plus 2 times 7. Twenty one plus fourteen equals twenty. I'm sorry, thirty five. All right, so that's my nice, juicy worded answer. I've done the best I can, just like you're going to do the best you can. And now I'm going to go back to the presentation and check my answer because I've done my very best and I'm ready to check. And I know that my answer doesn't have to be exactly what the answer says here as long as I have the same information as far as the answer to the question. Answer, they have 35 pencils. Three plus two equals five and five times seven equals 35, yes. Makes sense. All right, I hope you were able to follow along. Next, it's your turn to solve a read, draw, write question on your own. And the way this works is that I read this question to you. When I'm finished with the video, you pause it on this frame and you go and try to solve it with pencil and paper or your own dry erase markers or on a Google Jamboard if you have access to Google. You do your very best, write your very best sentences, and then you go to the description box below where you will search and find the answer to this question. Callie picks up acorns on the way to school. She puts three acorns in each of two front pockets. She puts three acorns in each of two back pockets. How many acorns does she have in all? Use the distributive property and an array to solve. Okay, it's your turn. Go do your very best and then check the answer in the description box below. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.